It was in May 31, 1606 that a group of Augustinian recollect missionaries brought to Manila from Mexico via the Acapulco galleon trade some religious images made from strong wood, one of which was the Christ carrying the cross. The reason for the Nazarena's dark hue can be explained with two theories. First, that the image caught fire on its way to Manila, darkening its ivory build. Second, that the image was originally carved by an unknown sculptor from very dark timber. The latter is more likely true. In an interview, Monsignor Savino Venco Jr. of the Loyola School of Theology said that the wood used for the Nazareno was called mesquite, a kind of tree prevalent in northern Mexico and southwestern United States. Monsignor Venco, who had been to Mexico to study this himself, further explained that mesquite's wooden core is black, similar to the Philippine Camagong. The images brought were kept by the Recoletos. They were brought out every Palm Sunday when the Passion of Christ was read until the war destroyed them. In January 9, 1787, when Archbishop Basilio Sancho de Santa Justa y Rufina ordered the Nazareno image to be transferred from Intramuros to the Church of Quiapo. The secular administered church then made it an annual habit to bring out the image and parade it on the streets to commemorate its transfer. This became the translation, the transfer of the image of Black Nazarene, which used to be a solemn, quiet procession, but its devotees have always been passionate. In a way, it is imitating the Calvary experience. The sacrifice and suffering that our Lord endured for our salvation, like when Jesus was walking barefoot, carrying the cross to Mount Calvary. The devotees also want to give back to God by participating in the suffering of our Lord and entering into the Paschal mystery of Christ. In 1620, a group of men who were strongly devoted to the Nazarene established the Cofradia de Jesus Nazareno, the first confraternity dedicated to Jesus in the Philippines. In 1651, then Pope Innocent X officially endorsed the group in a papal bull. His predecessors continued to recognize this group, which included Pope Pius VII, who granted indulgences to those who would pray before the image of the Jesus of Nazarene. St. John Paul II recognized the Quiapo Church as the minor basilica of the Black Nazarene because of its role in strengthening a deep popular devotion to Jesus Christ and because of its cultural contribution to the religiosity of the Filipino people. In the present time, on the first day of the feast, devotees bring their own replicas of the Nazareno to be blessed at the minor basilica of the Black Nazarene or Quiapo Church. This happens at around noon. Devotees brave the heat and congestion, anticipating the next few days of penitence. There is also the ritual of Pahalik, which takes place at the Carino Grand Stand. Devotees kiss the image of the Nazareno, believing it could bring miracles into their lives. During this ritual, they also wipe the image with their hand towels and clothes for the same reason. As they line up for their turn to kiss the image, some devotees kneel while others walk barefoot. Other rituals include the Pasindi and Pabihis. Some evangelists have deemed the feast idolatrous. For them, the immense veneration of the Nazareno is tantamount to sin. But for some Catholics, devotees need only purify their faith to keep the feast from getting violent. Every year, hundreds are injured in the procession. In 2006, a stampede even killed one devotee. Reverend Monsignor Clemente Ignacio, who was a former rector and parish priest of Quiapo, said that fanaticism and devotion are distinct practices. He said, 
The object of fanaticism is the self. Attention is to God. Their expression of faith may be loud, but it is not fanaticism. Fanaticism has no heavenly intention. Sociologists of religion have also studied the feast, which is considered one of the most important events in Philippine Catholicism. Dr. Manuel Zapitula of the University of the Philippines said that instead of just blind devotion, followers of the Nazareno above all aspire for a good life. Participating in the feast is just one of their ways of reaching that goal. Meanwhile, Dr. J. Il Cornelio of the Ateneo de Manila University said that the many believers find solidarity in the image of Christ bearing His cross. It speaks to the hardships of most of the Nazarenos believers. More than that, they also find solidarity with fellow devotees. People have sensed the spiritual wealth in Quiapo Church and there is a huge attendance for Mass every day and especially on Friday. On weekdays, there are about 10 Masses celebrated. There are also healing services. Somehow, the devotion is growing. However, it's the feast day that gathers together millions of devotees who walk in the procession, called the Traslacion, of the Black Nazarene. In Capo Church, you can witness many stories of the faith of people those who are patiently lining up for seven hours without complaints. They just want to pray and touch the image of the Black Nazarene. There are also long lines for confessions. What could have attracted the Filipinos to the Nazareno? Sociologists have tried to dissect the devotion of these religious followers. Some say that the Nazareno, an image of suffering, is relatable to the masses. Others believe in its miraculous powers, having survived fires, earthquakes, and even wars. There are numerous testaments from its devotees who allege that they've been cured of illnesses, passed difficult examinations, gifted with child, or even received job offers by simply praying to the Nazareno. Devotion to the Nazareno is far-reaching. In Cagayan de Oro City, procession is also organized using an official replica of the Nazareno given by the Quiapo Church in 2009. In Katarman Northern Summer, devotees have been venerating the Nazareno since another replica, also given as a gift by the Quiapo Church, arrived in the municipality. They celebrated their first translation in 2015. Filipino devotees abroad find their way to pay homage too. In countries like Australia and the U.S., followers of the Nazareno hold yearly mass celebrations honoring the image. They also parade their replicas within parish premises. In 2012, a replica of the Nazareno was even canonically enshrined at the St. Catherine of Siena Parish in California. In the words of former Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Luis Antonia Tagle, To understand the devotee, you have to be a devotee. Only a devotee could best understand a devotee. And we can add to this, Only God can truly see what is in the hearts of each devotee. He knows the purity of their intentions and the faith they have for Him as they give Him honor through the image of the Black Nazarene.